yeah, here is a quickie video <clears throat> about the second half of a partial fractions exam question. This is from the WJEC uh, A2 Unit 3 2018 paper. Um, this is uh, question five. This is the second part. So the first part is, here's a fraction. Please slap it apart into partials. And um, that's the result that you get. You have a style choice whether you want to keep that as a minus one and add your fraction or whether you want to make that subtract and a positive one on your fraction. That's a style choice. I think I'm going to uh, take advantage of that in a minute. But anyway, so the part B is, all right, so please integrate this nasty fraction from 5 to 7. And you can do that by exploiting your partial fractions uh, rearrangement there, because each of these pieces is relatively tidy to integrate. So these first two pieces um, are going to be natural log affairs, and this one is a power function affair. And for the sake of showing you what I'm doing, uh, I'm like, if you once you're fluent and steady with this, you can go from here to the answer, here to the answer, here to the answer in one step. But I'm going to break it down a bit to show you what I'm doing. Okay. So when you add an integral, you could split it up into separate integrals. And another thing you can do is you can bring a coefficient out front. So I can see that this fraction is one third times one over uh, x minus one. And here I've got minus a third times one over x minus four. And here I've got a four over x minus four quantity squared. So I'm gonna pull those coefficients out front because sometimes that helps me think. Okay, so I've got one third integral one over x minus one dx five to seven. That's an x. Okay, and then I'm going to pull the minus one third out. There's one third integral five seven one over x minus four. The advantage of this is that you don't have to deal with um, a multiple. I'll, I'll show you another way you, you could perceive this, um, but I think this is the cleanest way to deal with these types of things. I'm going, going to bring the four out on the last one, and I'm going to rewrite that with a negative index, x minus four quantity to the minus two dx, because this one is a power function affair. These are log affairs. These are variants on one over x, and that's variant on x to the minus two, and that's a power function thing. Okay, so this is this is all very nice because the coefficients on x, on, on all my x's, the coefficient is one, so I don't have to do any fancy chain rule um, stuff. So the first one is going to be one third, and this is going to be a natural log of x minus one. And we have to use absolute value because logs won't eat negatives. And we're evaluating that sucker from 5 to 7. Then we're subtracting. Um, the, you can put the 1 third either, either way, I guess. Um, then we're subtracting 1 third. And this is going to be um, the natural log of x minus 4. And we're evaluating that sucker from 5 to 7. and then four, and then add one to the power, divide by the new power. So I guess that's a minus four, or I could say times minus one. And, and we're evaluating that from five to seven as well. And I guess, I guess really, if you had done it all in one whack, you would have had one third natural log x minus one, minus a third natural log x minus four, plus four, uh, well, I guess that's a minus, isn't it? Subtract four times x minus four to the minus one. That whole phrase evaluated from five to seven. Um, do, do pause the video and give a think if I'm talking too quickly. Um, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. This might save you a little bit of faff, I don't know. It's up to you it's how your brain sees it. Okay, so if you put a seven through that business, you have one third natural log of uh, six minus a third natural log of three minus four times a, th uh, a third. Okay, I hope I'm doing this right. Uh, yeah, and then I subtract and I slap a five through that thing. So a third natural log of four minus a third natural log of one, which is nice, the natural log of one is zero, that's that's tidy, 
then minus four times minus one, one over minus one, which is minus one. Okay, so that all shakes out as, um, I'm looking at the mark scheme <laughs> as I'm writing this to you. This should all boil down um, if you wiggle everything out. Um, well, I guess I guess you can do some combine your log stuff, right? So you could factorize out a one third. Then you have natural log of six minus natural log of three, which is the natural log of six divided by three, which is the natural log of two. And then that's minus four thirds. And then uh, same trick again here. You're subtracting um, a third. Well, you want to be a little careful if you. Uh, I guess you should multiply through that that negative. So minus a third natural log. Let, let's not let's not do too much in our head here. Uh, plus a third. Oh, natural log of one is zero. That was just zero. And then uh, four times minus one is minus four. Subtract that. Add four. Subtract. Subtract four. I'm talking very quickly. You should be writing this down and pausing the video and checking for yourself that I'm doing it right. So at the end of the day. Uh, you have a third natural log of two minus a third natural log of four minus four thirds minus four, which is minus four thirds minus 12 thirds. So you should have uh, factorize all the one third then of a half minus 16 thirds. Uh, which does not match the mark scheme. The mark scheme says you should get one third times eight minus natural log of two. So your job is to, well, okay. So every, everything is fine. <laughs> everything is fine to this point. That's just doing the calculus and that's, I'm okay with that. When, when you start giving me petty arithmetic, I start making mistakes. And the reason I'm making mistakes is because as you can see, I'm doing too much in my head and I'm not writing enough steps out. So that's why even us seasoned, experienced professionals um, need to write steps out. And you as a student learning it, darn well, <laughs> need to do it too. Okay, so see if, if you can, that that should be, yeah, I don't know what I did wrong. See, um, I can see here that you've got a third natural log of two to the minus one, which means you can make, make it minus a third natural log of two. That's laws of logs write one half as two with an index, then you could bring the index out as a coefficient. So that part is okay. So I've got the minus a third lin two, but I don't know why I, I, I don't know why that's a minus and I don't know why that's not an eight. So that's your job is to figure that out. I guess that probably should have been a plus, huh? Where did I lose my plus? I don't know where I lost the plus. Your job is to go back and figure out why that should be a plus uh, here because then you'll come out with eight thirds. Ugh. Okay, um, I hope that's helpful. Hey, sorry for that abrupt continuity uh, cut there. Uh, I, I made a mistake in what I was trying to say and I had to reshoot. And I didn't want to reshoot the whole thing. Okay, so I mentioned in the main part of the video that there's, there's a couple ways we can view things like this. If you find yourself in a situation where you've, you've factorized something off and you have a linear fact, uh, factor here. So just like a plain old X and then some number. Um, rather than distributing the three through to make three X minus 12, yank that one third out and that can really simplify your life sometimes. But what if you didn't see that? Or what if you were handed something that was already multiplied through or maybe uh, the number doesn't factorize off nicely? What would you do? Well, so you're picking on the same example. If you multiplied the three through, um, I would definitely yank the negative out, always, okay? And so this sucker, it's a variant on 1 over x, integrating 1 over x. Um, so it's going to be natural log of that 3x minus 12 expression. But because of the 3 on the x, we multiply by a third, and that's because of chain rule. So if you differentiate this, this phrase, uh, the antiderivative, if you differentiate it to come... You know, come back and check that you get what's in your integral. Well, uh, differentiating natural log gives you one over the argument. So those are one over the three X minus 12, but then you have to multiply by the derivative of the argument, which is three. 
And if you multiply by three, that will interact with the one third, giving you a one and no stray extra numbers. That's why you have to put the one third in. Otherwise you have an errant times three. I hope that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, let me know. Okay, but, okay, so, all right. So put the one third with the minus out front as a coefficient on your lin, and there you go. And you're like, but wait, Elizabeth, that doesn't look the same as that answer. It's the same integral. We've done legitimate math. How can we end up at two different answers? And they are the same answer. And it's because of how this arbitrary constant works and how logs work. So let me show you why. So let's look at this, this um, our minus a third lin 3x minus 12 plus c business. Okay, so I'm going to factorize off that three inside the lin. Okay, and when you multiply inside a lin, if you have two things multiplied in the argument, you can break it apart into two logs added together. That's one of our laws of logs. Um, lin a b is lin a plus lin b. That's a law of logs. So I'm going to break this up. So I've got minus a third lin three minus a third lin x minus four. Let's see, if you need to pause and write this down for yourself and think it through, do. I know that I'm talking a little bit quickly here, okay, but you can pause the video and, and have a think. And, and you should come to here. Well, minus a third lin three is just a number. It's just a number. And I can merge it with that arbitrary constant and rename the arbitrary constant. So this gives me minus a third lin x minus four, just, just shuffling the three terms around, minus a third lin three plus c. And I'm going to, that's still just some number. It doesn't really matter that I have that number and then an arbitrary constant. What matters is, is having this expression in x and then an arbitrary constant tacked on. So you can rename that. And if you feel really pedantic about it, you can give it a different letter, but we don't do that in, in calculus. We tend to just call it C all over again, merge that, add or subtract a number in, keep calling it C. That's standard mathematical behavior. Um, so there we are. That's, that's why the, the two different methods take you to the same result. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.